Joe Biden's two-year-old tweet comes back to haunt him in a big way. The CDC says it's purposely withholding COVID information from the public. Plus, Liz Cheney blasts former President Trump again. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're having a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Joe Biden and the tweet that shall not be named. Actually, it's a tweet Biden posted two years ago, and now I'm sure he and his entire team are thinking, you know what? That might not have been a good idea after all. First, here's an update on what's been happening with Russia, Ukraine, and America, because the entire situation shows that Biden's complete inability to lead has consequences, not just here, but around the world as well. Here's the story. Russian President Vladimir Putin recognized the independence of two Ukrainian regions. CBS News tweeted the move signaled Putin is no longer interested in negotiating with the West to find a diplomatic resolution. After an anti-Ukraine speech Monday, Putin signed decrees recognizing the so-called Donetsk and Laos People's Republics According to the New York Times, the decrees order Russian armed forces to enter the territories for peacekeeping functions. That's the Russian side of things. Does he seem like he fears Biden? Does he seem like he respects Biden? Then there's the American side. Following Putin's announcement, Biden issued an executive order that will prohibit new investment, trade, and financing by U.S. persons to, from, or in the so-called DNR and LNR regions of Ukraine. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said the administration anticipated a move like this from Russia and are ready to respond immediately. BuzzFeed News correspondent Christopher Miller said President Biden's order was largely symbolic because there is already next to none of this to, from, or in Donetsk or Laos occupied territories. In other words, Biden's move was a whole lot of nothing. But here's the thing. Back almost exactly two years ago, Biden was pushing Russia collusion and attacking then-President Trump. And even though Trump made it clear to allies and adversaries that America was the big kid on the block, Joe Biden tweeted this. Vladimir Putin doesn't want me to be president. He doesn't want me to be our nominee. If you're wondering why, it's because I'm the only person in this field who's ever gone toe-to-toe with him. There are dumb tweets, and then there are dumb tweets. But that one? What can you say? Putin is having his way with Biden, and everyone knows it. And that's the thing. This is not just a regional conflict. This is Russia saying, we don't respect Biden, his administration, or America. Just check your world atlas, and you'll see that Ukraine is one of the nations that serve as a buffer, buffer countries between Russia and NATO. And Biden is showing that his failure is not limited to our shores. All right, next let's talk about the CDC and COVID misinformation. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, next let's talk about the CDC. Now we all know that the CDC has lost all credibility. Regardless of what area of the COVID issue we're talking about, data presented by the CDC only tells one side of the story. And that side is the side that is pushed by the news outlets and approved by big tech and social media. If you say anything counter to the approved science, you are being banned and shamed and shunned. All around the world, there are studies being made on masks, lockdowns, vaccinations, health risks, and more. And yet, The CDC ignores all of that because it's pushing a political agenda. For example, the CDC long advocated cloth mask use based on an anecdotal finding from a couple of hair salon owners. I'm serious. Yet other studies from around the world involving thousands of data points were ignored. Now we're finding out that the CDC is withholding sources of data because the CDC fears that people might come to different conclusions if they have the full information. Here's the story. The CDC has admitted it is withholding large portions of COVID-19 data, including on vaccine boosters, from the public because it fears the information could be misinterpreted. 
the leading public health agency has only published a small sample of the data it has been collecting, despite being two years into the pandemic, sources told the New York Times. Kristen Nordland, a CDC spokeswoman, said the reason for the slow release of data is because basically, at the end of the day, it is not yet ready for prime time. But another reason is that the data could be misinterpreted by the public, Nordland admitted. Oh my gosh, people might actually think for themselves. We can't have that in Joe Biden's America. Now, Dr. Nicole Sapphire was asked about the CDC's latest comments, and here's her reaction. And at the end of the day, the CDC is a political organization. The director is appointed by the president, and they work in lockstep with the White House. And while they have ample amount of data, they cherry pick what data is presented to the American public. When they were questioned about this, they said that it gives them time to check it and verify it for accuracy, but also at the end of the day, that they didn't necessarily think that Americans would be able to, to understand what it was. I mean, the condescension is palpable, the way that they responded to these questions. Sapphire is completely right. The CDC is a political organization. Its head is appointed by the president. And what we have seen clearly is that public health information has been pushed aside in favor of political messaging. It's wrong, and we have been paying the economic, social, and educational price for it. Here's more from Sapphire. But if you see the data that they put out, it is not because they're checking for accuracy. They're putting forth information as they fall in line with the policies that they have already recommended and they are omitting other data. Think of natural immunity, for example. Mm -hmm. They continue to discuss two extremely flawed bias studies and ignore the over 150 accurate studies that show natural immunity is protective. Natural immunity is just one area that the CDC is pushing misinformation. And now we are getting a better picture of what we suspected all along. It's crazy that we have to look to foreign studies and foreign reports to understand what the situation is in our own country. All right, next let's talk about Liz Cheney after a word from our sponsor. I wanna tell you about my friends over at World Fair. If you have a photo of your childhood home, your favorite travel spot, your hometown football stadium, whatever it is, World Fair takes that photo and turns it into a hand-drawn work of art. These sketches make great gifts, moving announcement cards, invitations, and more. So many possibilities that World Fair can do for you. And all you need is a photo. Just use the link in the description and use coupon code BOBBY13 for 10% off your next purchase. Next, Liz Cheney is at it again. She just can't seem to get away from going after former President Trump. This is what cost her her House leadership position and has led to prominent Republicans supporting her primary opponent. It's not that she's anti-Trump. If you like the guy, you like him. If you don't, you don't. The problem is that Cheney never learned to move on and focus on the things that really matter, such as bringing the Republican conference together or going after the Democrats as we get closer to the 2022 elections. This time, Cheney is complaining about Trump's opinions on Putin given Russia's latest aggression. Trump was doing an interview with Clay Travis and Buck Sexton, and he gave these opinions on Joe Biden. This is a disaster what's going on, whether it's Ukraine or the Afghanistan pullout, which I think was the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. I think that has a lot to do with what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, you look at inflation, you look at all of the different things that are happening so bad for our country, the border. Who could forget the border? The, uh, I've never seen anything like it. I've, I don't think our country has ever been so low. You could take the five worst presidents in the history of our country and put them together. I don't think they've done the damage that this administration has done. Issue after issue, Biden has failed, and former President Trump just hit on a few of those issues there. But then Trump was asked about Ukraine and the actions of Putin, how Putin is executing this invasion while Biden sits dumbfounded. Here's Trump. This is genius. Putin declares a big portion of the Ukraine, of Ukraine. Putin declares it as independent. Oh, that's wonderful. So Putin is now saying it's independent, a large section of Ukraine. I said, how smart is that? And he's going to go in and be a peacekeeper. That's the strongest peace force. We could use that on our southern border. That's the strongest peace force I've ever seen. They were more army tanks than I've ever seen. They're going to keep peace all right. No, but think of it. Here's a guy who's very savvy. I know him very well, very, very well. By the way, this never would have happened with us. 
had I been in office, not even thinkable. This would never have happened. Trump described the move by Putin as pretty savvy, and apparently that was just too much for Liz Cheney. After hearing Trump's remarks, Cheney took to Twitter and posted this. Former President Trump's adulation of Putin today, including calling him a genius, aids our enemies. Trump's interests don't seem to align with the interests of the United States of America. Trump's comments aid our enemies? Are you kidding me? Look at the way Biden is handling Iran, or what he did in Afghanistan, or how he's handling Russia. And Cheney thinks Trump is aiding our enemies. How about if Cheney finally lets go of the Trump bashing and just does her job? Is that too much to ask? And finally, we have the complete bust that was the NBC coverage of the Beijing Olympics. Not only were the ratings bad, they were super bad. Here's the story. A sobbing Russian figure skater berated by one of her coaches for a poor routine. Grim-looking cooling towers in the background of acrobatic snowboard jumps. Diplomatic boycotts. Half-empty stands. Announcers covering the games from Connecticut. It all played out in a host country engaged in human rights atrocities that was also the origin site of a global pandemic. For NBC, it wasn't exactly Olympic glory in China. It certainly wasn't Olympic glory for NBC. The network went out of its way to silence voices who spoke out against China. That country has one of the worst human rights records in the entire world. Some nations were brave enough to boycott the games, while others like the US under Joe Biden and left-wing corporate America acted like everything was no big deal. Well, it certainly was a big deal to NBC's bottom line. Here's more. Through Tuesday, according to the Associated Press, an average of 12.2 million watched the Olympics in primetime on NBC, cable, or its Peacock streaming service, a 42% dip from the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea. Only 10 million watched NBC alone, a 47% drop from 2018, and through early last week, it was down 57% in the critical 25 to 54 age demographic from the Pyeongchang Games. Viewers stayed away in alarming numbers, and NBC has to wonder whether it was extraordinarily bad luck or if the brand of a once unifying event for tens of millions of people is permanently tainted. The Associated Press wrote. Now, NBC also saw a big ratings drop in the Summer Olympic Games in Tokyo as compared to other Summer Olympics, so perhaps it's not just all about China. My thought is that it's certainly partly about China, but it's also due to the fact that the Olympics were once a rallying event for national pride. And over the decades, the far left has gone out of its way to diminish notions like patriotism and American pride in the American spirit. The left wants to separate everyone based on race or ethnicity instead of fostering the stronger notion that we are all Americans working together. When you chip away at the idea of an American culture, then is it any wonder that fewer people are tuning in? I believe America is the greatest country in the world, but we're now seeing the effects of a generation who's being taught that America isn't. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget... If you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Thank you so much for tuning in. Our next show is going to be Friday evening at the usual time, 6.30 p.m. Central. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.